Welcome to the financial, industrial and cultural heart of Italy, Milan. Home to many of Italy's icon brands including Pirelli, Armani and Dolce & Gabbana, just to name a few. Located in the mountainous northwest of Italy, Milan is the capital of the Lombardy region, a land of lakes and stunning scenery. Considered by most Italians as the creative centre of this vibrant country, Milan concepts the ultimate in tomorrow's trends. This is Italy's think tank city. Above all, Milan is famous for style and fashion and coffee is no exception. This is where the first espresso was brewed and innovation continues on to this very day. I'm here to check out some of the finest cafes in the fashion capital of the world. Milan City is home to just under 1.5 million very fashion conscious Italians. Along with London and Paris, Milan is considered a world centre for all things chic and stylish. In the city centre is the Galleria Vittorio Emmanuel II, one of the most extraordinary buildings in all of Italy. Architect Giuseppe Mengoni created this masterpiece between 1865 and 1877. Sadly, this beautiful structure was Mongoni's last, falling from the Galleria's rooftop to his death just before completion. Nowadays, the gallery contains exclusive shops and elegant cafes. Can you imagine a better setting for a cafe than this? I'm off to visit Cafe Zucca, which is a real icon here in Milan. And this particular cafe has been impressing its customers with innovation for decades. Gaspare Campari was the owner of the original cafe located nearby, but it was not until September 15, 1867 that the Cafe Zucca was opened in its current location at the corner of the Galleria. Originally a wine and spirits bar, this shop has been a favourite with locals for over 135 years. The walls are decorated with superb mosaic murals by Angelo De Andrea. Rare wooden panelling and wrought iron chandeliers compete with views of Milan's famous cathedral or Duomo. This is where the first Campari herb cocktail was born and Gaspari Campari forged a reputation as a creative spirit maker. His repertoire included elixirs, bitters, vermouths and alcoholic creams. He even dabbled with herbal remedies. This inventiveness attracted politicians, artists and intellectuals alike and the Zucca is still a favourite venue for the introduction of tomorrow's trends. <laughs> All those at home, this tastes kind of exactly like what a chocolate mousse would be if it was a coffee mousse. And this is the soldi cappuccino. I'm going to try this as well. The Café Zucca was a favourite meeting place for Giuseppe Verdi and the singer Arturo Toscanini, who would stop in after performing at nearby La Scala, Italy's premier opera house. Upstairs there is a beautifully decorated restaurant where you can look out onto the shoppers in the Galleria and feast on an impressive menu which includes the delicious risotto alla milanese made with saffron and parmesan cheese. This is uh, my name, uh, risotto alla milanese from Zucca. And uh, if you want, come, I'm cooking it for you. All in all, Zucca in Galleria is one of the must-see cafe experiences of Milan, a coffee lover's paradise. I'm right in the centre of Milan's fashion district and I'm here to visit a very famous cafe. 
and they tell me that the barista has been here for over 30 years. One of the historical shops of Milan, the cafeteria Cova, is very famous not just here in Milan but all over the world. If you want a special coffee or cappuccino from our Pasquale, you have to come here to visit us. When he's on the machine, yeah. nobody touches the machine. No, they can't. <laughs> it's what, very dangerous. What happens if someone, someone from the staff yeah. make their own coffee and mess with the machine? Does he go a bit crazy? A little bit. Really? Yes. Because starting from the morning to the end, he opened the coffee machine and he closed his machine. So he's very nice, very kind also. Now, tell me about Milan and the people of Milan. They're very, obviously, they're known around the world for their style. Yeah. Of course, you are just here in Monte Napoleone. It's one of the best uh, streets uh, of fashion, of mode. The Cova was established in 1817 by Antonio Cova a soldier of Napoleon whose skills as a pastry chef helped earn the cafe a world-class reputation. During World War II, the Cova was bombed and was relocated to its new address. In the 90s, the cafe had franchised as far afield as Southeast Asia and was even aboard nine luxury vessels. But they want to come here and to try to look if uh, everywhere here there is some VIP because a lot of VIP come here. VIP? Yeah, what very important people. Yes. Actor. Actors yeah. come here. Yeah, of course. Christine explained that the Cafe Cova is a great place to people watch. The fashionista come here for their coffee and supermodels regularly drop by to binge on a delicious cake or a handmade chocolate. I have to admit that I didn't feel too out of place amongst the fake tans and hairdos. Perhaps this fashion business was beginning to take effect. Just here is, okay, I don't want, I want to have my coffee, but also speak, uh, run away, go to a boutique, go to Gucci, to Versace, come here, have a cappuccino, very fast, very fast. There is no avoiding the countless boutiques in a city utterly obsessed with fashion. The Milanese pride themselves on innovation. The first espresso machine was designed here, as was the first lever-driven machine. Using a spring mechanism helped force the water through the coffee, creating a richer, more aromatic brew. This combination of fashion and innovation continues with today's coffee machines that combine practical design and fashion-inspired aesthetics. Voted one of the top 50 industrial designers in the world and Vice President of Design at DeLonghi, Giacomo Borin is one person who has to have his finger on the pulse of ever-changing design trends. The design needs to pay attention to what is happening in the world. There is the scent of specific trends or cultural situations that are evolving. The characteristic of DeLonghi is to always be on the front foot, interpreting these new factors and translating these trends into new products. DeLonghi is a company that looks to the international market and therefore is making international design not specific to one cultural reality, but the synthesis of many.